Welcome to Bandit's Keep. I'm Daniel. In this video, we're going to talk about solo play. And I've talked about it before. You can check out my other video. But here I want to talk specifically about running an adventure module solo. And what elements make an adventure module great for that? So, of course, like many people, when I run solo, I use a lot of oracles. I use random charts. I use tables. I use procedures. But sometimes you just want to dig into an adventure module. That allows you to have a little bit of a more codified story. And it kind of makes it a little more self-contained, right? You could play it one time and move on, or you could make it part of your campaign. This video is inspired by and sponsored by the Watcher DM who just started a Kickstarter today, April 12th. It's going to run until May 17th. The Kickstarter is for the Bloody Bell Boots Boogie, which is a fun little adventure module, which we're gonna talk about in a second. And most of this video, we're gonna refer back to some sample pages from this module so I can point out what makes a module great for solo play. The Bloody Bell Boots Boogie is a darkly whimsical adventure module that's full of joyfully murderous red caps to delight and terrify your players. Explore the valley of secrets and uncover the red cap threat. In this 40 page booklet with fully illustrated maps, Easy to use reference cards, unique monsters, treasure, and music. Rescue the mayor's daughter and avenge the slaughtered animals of Westbridge while trying not to bob your head to the dreaded jingle of Billy's Bill Boots. So the Watcher DM has a great little website. I'll put a link along with the link to the Kickstarter. They've been around for about three years, putting out all kinds of fun content and adventures. If you support this Kickstarter within the first 48 hours, you're going to receive a bonus adventure, The Tomb of the Vampire General. This will be in the quest format and will be sent to you with your physical rewards. You just got to pay the shipping. So there's a few things here besides which we're going to get into later about why I think this is great for running solo that I think will be useful. The first thing, long term, at least there's going to be a great D66 uh, Fay generator so we can produce. It says 1.5 million. I didn't do the math, but that sounds about accurate. <laughs> Different fey creatures. I love when an adventure or a supplement comes with something that I can use in all kinds of adventures. So if you love fey creatures, this chart alone might be worth <laughs> jumping in for. There will be a unique subclass, the fey hunter for the 5e version. There'll be a class for the OSR version and a role for the quest version. So this Kickstarter is going to be available in three different gaming systems, depending on what your preference is. Lots of stretch goals, including some magic items are available as well. So definitely check this out. Again, jump into the first 48 hours and get yourself that free adventure. Remember that it starts today, April 12th. First 48 hours would be, I guess, April 14th. And on May 17th, we are closed. So jump in now when you have the chance. You can find a link to the Bloody Bell Boots Boogie Kickstarter in the description below and as a pinned comment. So what makes this adventure, well, really any adventure, great for solo play? Let's dig in and look at some elements. Typically, when I'm looking for an adventure module to run solo, I want to look for something that is advertised as or that I've heard or that seems to be something that I can run without reading the whole thing. I like to be surprised when I'm playing solo, which is one of the reasons why I often use oracles and random tables, right? I don't want to know the story or how the story ends theoretically, right, before I get into it. And an adventure like this one that is more location based and while it does have an overall plot it's you can do one location at a time we don't need to read all the ways to the end to be able to run it properly some things that are long adventure paths that i might run with my group are like that right you want to read the entire book so you have an understanding of what's going on this adventure and adventures that i like for solo are broken up into little chunks there's an overarching idea, but overall each individual location is broken down in a way that you can run it without having read it before. So we're looking at adventure area one, the river crossing. And what you'll notice is there's a bunch of bullet points. These bullet points give us some setup, right? What we initially encounter when we enter the space. So we look through it, birds have gone silent, a bridge uh, with a sign that says Billy's Bridge, right? So we have this that we can kind of narrate ourselves in. We also have hidden things. So as we explore rolling dice for searches or however you do it in the system you're playing, you can start to reveal these hidden things. And then of course, there's an NPC here. And what we have that's very nice here is we have a, why do they fight? So we get some information about this NPC, why they would fight and how, you know, how we want to handle the situation solo. We can use that to help influence our roles that we make on the Oracle or just any decisions we make. What's nice about this particular adventure is that 
and I'm going to talk about this in a second but with the maps, but it actually moves you from area to area and interludes and stuff and kind of tells you where to go, which is very nice. So we don't have to look at an overall map, which again, keeps things a little more secret from us. So when we look here at area two, the cabin's entrance, we have again, a lot of the same features, but you'll notice that there's just a chunk of the map. I love that. When I'm looking for an adventure that I want to run solo, I love adventures that just give me a piece of the map that I need in each area. You know, oftentimes you'll get the whole map as well, but this is super useful because it allows me to be surprised. Like, I don't know what's to the south, so I need to go there to find out. So going back to kind of some overall ideas here, we want to try to pick adventures for our solo gaming, I guess unless you're going to run it as a one-shot for yourself, that you can fit into your adventure. So it's nice when they prep the adventure with either rumors or reasons that the player characters might be involved that isn't one specific thing doesn't start off by saying, you are Knights of the King and you are doing this. Rather, it gives you a few different options. This adventure does that by giving a heroic option, kind of a mercenary option or, you know, and so on. So you can see which one fits into your world. Another thing I find useful in small quantities and done correctly is a nice little backstory. Because again, as we're building our solo campaign, we are the GM and we're also the player. So sometimes it's nice to fill that in. Now, a backstory that comes in stages with, you know, this happened, then that happens, then it happens is cool. What I generally like to do in the solo game is start with the the incident that's going on. So the most recent part of history. And then I'll allow myself to find other little bits and pieces through role play and through rolling the dice and oracles about the history, which will then start filling in stuff to me. Again, I like to be surprised so I don't read the whole thing at once. There's lots of little hints and clues and secrets in this particular module that are bullet pointed out and listed. And what I would do if I was running this and what I will do when I run it, when it comes out after the Kickstarter is I'll probably number them and then I'll roll randomly when it seems like a time should come. Maybe when I get doubles on the dice or when I enter a new location, whatever I decide and I'll reveal something there. Now I'll use the narrative of my solo play to reveal it. I won't just say like, suddenly I know, you know, if there's a creature there, they'll say something or they'll be writing on the wall. So you can add it into your narrative story and again, tell yourself the story a little bit as you're going, as opposed to reading everything up front. Another point I want to throw in here, if you're running things solo, is a lot of people run with one adventurer. They find that to be fun. They can embody the single adventurer and they go that way. But a lot of adventure modules are written for groups of characters. So you've got a couple of options here. One is to try to play adventure modules that are, let's say, slightly of a lower level than your character. You have a fourth level adventurer. Maybe you run a first or second level adventure. That should help balance things out a bit. The other thing you could do is bring in a henchman, which is probably my recommendation. So bring in some companions just for that adventure or somebody your character hires. Some NPCs, basically, to kind of flesh out your group. That way you have enough skills to cover wider ranging areas, right? If you are creating it on the fly yourself, you can make your own wandering monster lists that are balanced to your single character. But when you're running in a module that's, you know, designed for four player characters, it's going to be a little different and action economy can be a thing. So keep that in mind. Of course, you can do a little combination of both. So maybe it's a first level adventure. So you play a second or third level character and maybe you have one henchman, right? Now, the one place where this can become tricky is, of course, with magic users, because it, there's a big difference between a first level magic user and a fourth level. <laughs> so, you know, that, as far as what spells you can have. So that may unbalance you a bit. So if you're playing a magic user, keep that in mind. I wouldn't necessarily try to adjust things on the fly, because, again, since you haven't read the whole adventure, you don't know. You don't know what's going to happen, right? You don't know how to adjust it. So instead, what I would do is come into it with a little bit more powerful character than you think you need. So as much as I like to use random charts and cards to flip out dungeons and things like that when I'm playing solo, it's really nice to dig into a well-fleshed-out adventure and be able to play it and still be surprised. So if you're looking to do this, look for adventures like the Bloody Bell Boots Boogie. Thanks for sponsoring. <laughs> Again, link in the description. Where you can play out each scene or each area as they go. You don't have to have read the whole module up front. Secrets are revealed a little bit at a time. And you can, again, build your narrative as you walk through it. Be surprised by the adventure, but also know there's something tight here, some 
finished product that you are actually able to enjoy. Again, thanks WatchDM for supporting. Check the description below for a link to the Kickstarter page, also their page. I'll also pin the comment, so people that don't like to look in the description <laughs> for some reason, uh, I'll pin a comment that has the link to the Kickstarter there. If you have any questions, please let me know. If you play solo and you run adventure modules, let me know if you have any other tips. This channel is about sharing, so let's share some stuff. If you've got a lot more to share, <laughs> that's a weird transition, join my Discord server. There's lots of great people over there chatting. I'll put a link to that in the description. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, do all the YouTube stuff. I'll talk to you soon.